Well, hello. Welcome to the episode within the episode. This is episode 21. And at the same time we're doing our Wildcat 3 Mun launch, we are going to be doing some fun on Kerbal. And Bob is going to be launched here in a minute. I'm going to send him in the 2x toward... I don't know. Let's send him, let's send him out. Let's send him out out and about. Uh, can have him land somewhere and do some science. So basically what we're going to do is while we are on our way to the Mun, and these will all be very quick experiments, so while we're on our way to the Mun, Bob is going to be doing his best to try and get to the North Pole. I kind of want to have him go this way if we can. So we're going to have him try and get to the North Pole because I haven't been to the North Pole and I haven't been to the desert much. Actually, I have been to the North Pole, but I just haven't been there in a while. Um, those separate and rocket go, rocket go. Go, Rocket, go! Get this pointed in the right direction. I mean, so far we've only taken a minute, so... We have about 20 minutes before... We have to deal with our... Mun stuff. So hopefully in that time we can at least get one... One quick trip. Put Bob on the way to the Mun. Er, not the Mun, but you know, the polar ice caps. I'm getting my stuff mixed up. I shouldn't do two of these things at the same time. It's very confusing. Um. He's gonna run out of fuel here in a minute. Oh, oh careful, careful. Let's, let's throttle back actually. Uh, because we don't need. We need more of a lateral burn at this point. Stop, 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 stop. So this is the first time I've ever tried to launch two ships at the exact same time. I probably figure. I probably will find out very soon here why I should do that. Stop it, stop it. There we go. It's kind of wanting to weave back and forth here. Oh. And there go those engines. Now, this one's a slower engine, so. We're going to want to get it, get her done. Alright, so we're at the ice caps. And we want to land in the middle. So let's go ahead, let's try to list down now. And... Don't know how long we have. We have about two minutes to the apoapsis. And how long of how long do we have? Five minutes. Um Okay, so very neat little trick that I learned. Also from Mr. Scott Manley. Is we can go ahead and set a note there. So we have six minutes to wait until we get to that, so we'll have time. Maybe we have 20 minutes on that, on that, uh, that orbital burn to get to the Mun. I mean, it's gonna take a six, so this is a good way to kill some time without having to fast forward through the game, get some extra work done. And Bob seems pretty happy. 
So for for the moment, we're going to actually go out and we're going to land Bob, but we're not going to go do science with him yet. Um, we're going to wait until we are actually on our way to the Mun in the Wildcat 3 before we go start doing science with all these guys. And we're going to do some more too. We're going to drop some more of these guys off in different areas because I also have the, the barometer. I haven't done that in a lot of places yet and I'm kind of wobbling, wobbling the screen back and forth as I talk because I do this too much. Um, so our node is coming up in five minutes. We're approaching the apoapsis right now actually. In about 30 seconds we'll begin to descend. That's fine. That's fine. We want that. So, we don't really need to do much more at this point. We just kind of maybe want to orient ourselves in the right direction. Just face backwards a little bit here. Really all we need to do. That's, that's weird. It's like giving us all kinds of our marks all jittery and stuff right now. But really we just need to face retrograde at this point. And there's our apoapsis 2x. We have gone past the apoapsis and it's telling us we have apoapsis in 21 minutes. That's if we had an actual orbit. We don't. We're just going to crash right into this gigantic... Actually we may have a... Be getting there closer. Oh, yeah, four minutes. We're getting there a little bit closer than I thought. I was in the ground. Okay, so you can see it's a little, a little less jittery now. In fact, why don't we go ahead and I'll just bring this a little bit further up so that way we use it as a mark when to drop our parachutes. So yeah, 3 minutes, 23 seconds is when we'll drop the parachutes, and then yeah, it should be pretty close to the ground. We should be able to get a... We should be right over the ice cap, and we should be actually really close. That's where the North Pole is, right there, where the... Uh, where the graphics are kind of all stretched out at. So there we go. You can see there's the, the polar ice cap coming up right now. And I want to wait till I'm a little closer to the ground to jettison this uh, this huge liquid fuel booster because it's going to change our trajectory a little bit. And I want to make sure that we're good to go. So uh, now we just kind of wait. So about two minutes away, the music has changed. You see that some of the land is, is that a leak or is that actually a, a deformation in the, in the, the graphics? Because there is a deformation. Oh yeah, it's a, a little bit of a deformation. It's loading in. Hopefully it's going to load in. Uh, Bob, Bob seems very happy. He's very happy to go to North Hole for us. Aren't you, Bob? He's you creeping. Did you get Kerber? Get Kerber? Get Kerber. <laughs> okay, so getting closer now. You can see we're about a minute 47 away from touching down on the surface of Kerbal again. Oh! Are those the, uh, oh no, it's the, I thought that was the Northern Lights. I thought they'd actually put them into the game, but no, it's, it's the, it's the Galaxy View. Uh, I don't know if it's the Milky Way, but it's whatever the galaxy looks like in whatever galaxy and solar system Kerbin is in. It's a very different world from ours. So, ooh, we only have a minute to go. And we're over, we're over the polar ice cap, so we can at any time decide to jettison this, uh... This, 
this rocket if we want to. So, 48 seconds. We're still going very fast. There's the the heat from the from the atmosphere as we re-enter. And that might be a good sign that we need to jettison that. There we go. Goodbye, Rocket. You've served us well. Alright, so we're coming on... Oh, there's mountains up here. I didn't know there were mountains up here. That's cool. Coming on up. I'm getting back into space. Kerbin airspace over the, the North Pole. You can see our trajectory is changing a little bit. See, I told you that's... Uh, it's changing because we do have a weight change there combined with the the slower speed we're traveling at. So let's get our gears down. Talking about three hundred meters a second. And let's kinda of orient ourselves a little a little more straight up in the air. Try the atmosphere break as much as possible. Bob looks a little nervous. Don't worry, Bob. We got you. We got you, buddy. He's he's scared. He's scared. So about twenty five hundred feet is when we're gonna hit the parachute. Drag shoot, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll slowly descend, slow us down. It gets about 500 meters. It will go ahead and deploy. So now, there we go. All right, so Bob is. Oh, you heard that explosion. That was our rocket exploding. So I would say, I would say it's time for us actually to go ahead and go back. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to let Bob be. Uh, let me go back to the Space Center. Oh. oh, I can't do that yet. So we got to wait a little bit more. And then we're going to have to go right back to the Space Center and get ourselves ready for our, our MUN insertion burn. So Bob Kerbin going to be the second Kerbal after Jebediah to land on the the Mun, but uh, not in the Mun, but yeah, maybe we'll make him land on the Mun. And he can be the second one after Bill. All right, so he landed. So Space Center, let's go back. Yeah, we're gonna hop back to our Wildcat Three. So see you guys in a sec once we have that insertion burn already done. All right, hey, Will Gas is happy. Look at him. All right, so we are back here with another two uh, X. Will Gas is our our pilot, Will Gas Kerman. First time we've seen him on the series, and he is going to be tasked with heading out to the desert. That's our goal, and we want to make sure that we can get in a high enough orbit so that we can clear clear the atmosphere and not have it drag on us. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we can land in the desert itself, because that's the one place we haven't been so far, is the desert. So, Will Gas, are you ready, buddy? Here we go. Three, two, one, kaboosh. So, we still have our one Wildcat 3 on the way to the Mun. And I think it's Bob. Bob is the one who's on the North Pole, right? I think so. Slow down a little bit here. And Will Gas Kerman, looking scared. Looking scared. Don't worry, Will Gas. You're safe with us. Alright. So, solid fuel boosters are going to start running out momentarily. I'm going to kind of shift, a, use the rockets here to shift a little bit to the direction that we want to head. Those can go. 
and begin our turn. Here we go. Here we go. Turning in a rocket. Do do do. Okay, so I'm getting put back on the 90 there. Gonna rotate just enough to make sure we're going straight. Good, good, that's a good spot. And you can see we are we are aiming for this big sandy block right there. We've never been there. Never been there. In all of Kerbal Space Dumb, we've never made it over there. So let's slowly throttle these back a little bit since we're in the upper atmosphere now. Don't need as much oomph. As we get higher and higher up, we can rely a little bit more on our speed to kind of carry us. So let's throttle these back. Okay, we're good. We're good. I think we're good. 73,000 is pretty good. And go ahead and set our mark here to burn into an orbit. That's a little bit much. A little bit much. 50,000 is good. I think that's... Uh, we get 46. That's fine. That's fine. So our burn is coming up now. And we're in orbit. Not quite out of Kerbin's space yet, but we're in orbit. So we'll align ourselves on the plane. Right here. Just a straight up and down straight uh, straight horizontal plane right now. That's what we want to be at. And yep, that's good right there. There we go. And you get a ton of speed, so let's burn early and burn out these engines right here. Let's use these for all they're worth. have to manually separate from the state this uh, screen. There we go. Doing all right. I actually want to be kind of on this plane. Actually no, I don't want to get rid of that yet. Watch for the periapsis to come down. There it is. And it's at about there we go, right right about there. That's good. That's good. So we're gonna burn before we get to that periapsis too. Just to kind of we're in orbit, that's good. Got a ton of fuel left. Um, I want to, at some point we gotta also go ahead and burn back a little bit here. So that we come down into the area we want to be in, which is right here. So that's a good spot to burn. And we'll quick save. And let's start to orient ourselves a little bit closer to where we need to be. So this is going to be retrograde burn, so it's going to be on the other side. And not save. Um, hmm. It's going to be a retrograde burn, that's all I know. There we go. Fast forward a little bit in time. 20 minutes, 19, 18, 16, 15, 
We're into deep space. Ten minutes, nine, eight. So I want to make sure we can orient ourselves properly here, find where our... There it is, right there, okay. Must have been clear on the other side. There we go. You're oriented with that. And we'll fast forward a little bit in time to get a little bit closer. So now we're about a minute out. And we're going to need to slow this bad boy down a lot. That's, that's what we're going to be doing. So quick save again. And just to check, make sure that uh, Wildcat 2 is still on its way to the Mun. And Wildcat 3 is still on its way to the Mun. The 2 is right here, 2x. So here we go. Okay, we're gonna need to do a long burn here. Gonna need a long burn. So we'll start to bring this in a little bit. So the periapsis is going down. And now it's intersecting. We may actually not need to hit our point. We may be able to do this with a uh, just by burning ahead of the time. So let's go ahead. And yeah, our our apple apps is changing a little bit. So we want to actually. I want to go ahead. Kind of burn a little bit. Prograde just a tiny little bit because the rotation of the Mun is going to affect where we come down. And I want to make sure that we do this properly. And this desert is, for some reason, it's incredibly hard to hit. Okay. So, there we go. No, I do not want to do anything with a Wildcat Mark III pot. I have to get that out of there. Um, but we are starting our descent. Now we are right now over, kind of over where this giant crater is. And hopefully we'll be, we'll be descending soon to a point where I can start to arrow break a little bit maybe with the engine and just slow us down just enough so we're able to actually reach the desert this time so we do have we do have quite a bit of real estate ahead of us that's good that's the good news don't have to worry about overshooting it because it, if anything we're going to undershoot it <laughs> it's always the worry it's what I've done so many times before I've just undershot where the, the desert marker should be. Okay, so you see there's a desert right there coming up on it. We can go ahead and just fast forward a tiny little bit. See our orbit's starting to decay. Alright, we're on surface speeds now. Yeah, you can see that's the thing. Right there, you can see that since we're since we're slowing down, since we're hitting the the gravity of the Earth or the curbing, we are slowing down a bit. That's what I was afraid of, but at the same time prepared for. So if I can, I can actually maybe swing around this way and just throttle up. Just a little bit of thrust going forward. This counteracted a tiny little bit. It won't do much, but it'll be enough. So we're gonna we're actually burning into the ground here and we're kinda speeding up our descent. 
a little bit. But you can see our our touchdown point's not changing much. Apple Apps is pulling back a whole lot. And that's fine. We're over the Rocky Mountains. On the curb and surface. And this is all fine and dandy. So at some point here I am gonna throttle down probably right now and just say, alright, we'll land where we land. And we will leave that behind. Gear comes out. Drag shoots out to give us a little bit of stability. Gears down. And booyah, we made it. I'm pretty sure this is uh oh. Oh my goodness, you can cut the parachute. That is scary. Good reports above the deserts. Let's transmit that data since we don't need to store it. Um log pressure data. Um can I reset the experiment. Yeah. Yeah, oh there goes the uh quick save and can I do an EVA report from here? <laughs> yes, flying over curb and desert. Let's board. Alright. Um does this give me anything extra? No, it's just still flying at Kerbin. Um temperature. Keep that data. Science materials bay. Nope. Let's not do that. Alright, so we're touching down. Going pretty fast. Ooh. A little bit of a rough landing, but we made it. So observe mystery goo. Let's keep that data. <laughs> Did it say the goo seems to hate it here? <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll keep that data. And materials bay. Desert dust appears to have contaminated all the samples. We did learn that deserts aren't a good place to bring expensive science equipment though. <laughs> oh, that's great. Alright, so we're in desert. Keep that data as well. Come on in here. Log the temperature. Large plumes of heat are rising from the surface of the desert. Keep that data. Lock pressure data. Yes. Crew report. Transmit that stuff. All right. Um, TVA, you buddy. TVA report. Most precarious situation. All right, let's uh, cancel. Oh, be report. Okay, so we're flying over that. We already have that one. Let's hop down. Oh, oh, gas. What are you doing? Take a surface sample. Keep the data. You be a report. Keep the data. Let's review our sample. What does it say? Lost the sand and rocks here. You're thankful that you've been in a climate controlled environment because it sure looks hot out there. The sand is dry and loose and it looks like it's going to take some effort to clean your gear afterward. Alright, so we'll keep that data. All in all, I think uh I think it's gonna be a little warm here for Wilcast. We're gonna leave him here for a bit. But we're gonna go back and take a look at the the Wildcat 3, make sure that we're all set here. But congratulations, Blue Gas, you were the first Kerbinot to actually make it to the desert. So hooray! Yay! Victory jump! He seems happy. Alright, so we'll be right back. Alright, so we're back here, and we're gonna go ahead and Blue Gas, can we can we eat can we target Tim? Let's recover the vessel. And got a bunch of science there. 31.9 science. Tracking station. Let's recover a wheel gas. And he gives us 11.4. So we'll go back. 
actually to our our tracking station and we want to go ahead and fly this bad boy way up here to North Pole with Bob Kerman and Bob let's get some pressure data for you and some temperature data keep that data keep the data uh, the materials bay we shall observe keep that observe the mystery goo keep the data crew reports from the ice caps up Kerman let's go woo bonk <laughs> oh my goodness he's almost tipping the ship over <laughs> um, EVA reports keep the data take a surface sample keep the data recover the vessel All right, so done with that. Go ahead and the Wildcat 2 will recover that as well. Excellent, so 7.8 science, not a whole lot, but it's worthwhile, I think. Uh, so you, our last buddy we need. So Jebediah is still floating out here. He's been floating out here forever. Can we EVA you? Is there any benefit to that? Nope. Board the ship. Observe the mystery goo. Let's keep the data on that. Observe the materials bay. Yeah, we'll keep the data on that as well. Temperature. Yes, that's worthwhile. Pressure data. Nope, no pressure data. So, Jebediah, how about we bring you home, buddy? Let's get you back home. You are the last Kerbinaut that we have not returned. Burn a little bit back on this, so our periops can be way within the, uh, the atmosphere on that. Which is fine, that's exactly what we want. And we'll do that. So we'll orient ourselves in a way that we can get a final burn in for Jebediah. Bring him in because he's been on this mission forever. He's been on this mission for a very long time, and he, he needs to come home because extended time in space is bad for your body. Yeah, Jebediah, look at you. You're so happy. A little bit of science from him, too. So, it'd be good to have all that. Um, burn is in 16 minutes. Let's use our old friend the fast forward to go ahead and do that and move through time and space at a rate that is more reasonable for us. Time is picking up. Oh. So it's going to be about another minute since that four times speed. Uh, we are angling ourselves a different trajectory so that good old good old Jebediah Jebediah Kerman yeah head of the head of the Kerman clan <laughs> um it's like he's some redneck southerner or something like that like he's clamp it you know Jebediah found oh <laughs> I don't know whatever Okay, so we are approaching Jebediah's burn. Just speed up time a little bit here. To give us a little bit of time. I want to make sure that we're 
angled properly for this. And we have about 30 second burn here. So there's our speed. Getting closer, our node. Nude. <laughs> um, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so we did our burn a little early, which changed our trajectory a tiny little bit. And now we're coming into desert. So you know what, why don't we just keep burning? We'll change this to a a different trajectory, a different uh, different area to land in. Since we're not obviously going to land in the Vincent vicinity of Kerbal Space Center, we might as well go land somewhere else more exciting. Alright, so now, now we wait, now we wait, <laughs> so we fly over the giant crater that is left over from some kind of gigantic meteor Asteroid impact. Bolide is the actual technical term I think they use for uh, for space rocks that kind of covers meteors, asteroids, meteorites. Um, I don't know. I'll have to check that out. But we're flying on over and speed's picking up. Speed's picking up. So we're over land. We can go ahead and just jettison that. Since that never made it. And we'll slow ourselves down a tiny little bit. Okay, so now we're kind of coming down in this valley here. Which is what I wish we would have done for Bill. It would have been a lot easier if we'd gotten down in this valley instead of the... Uh, A little bit of a graphical glitch there. And slowing down. Slowing down. Slowing down. Here we go, separation. And gears out. Can we observe the mystery goo here? No, it doesn't do anything. It does nothing. Alright, so we're kind of still in the highlands, I think. Um Coming on down. Hit that drag shoot. Shibadai looks happy. You're home, buddy. You're home. We have made it home. And it will deploy in any second now. Any second. Thank you. Okay. So, there's our stage blowing up. Oh, grasslands. Okay. You can might be able to get a little bit more science out of the, the grasslands, just kind of milk it. Nope, so, so flying at curb in. Toggle display. Oh. Um. I don't feel kind of gutsy. I was going to have Jebediah kind of EVA out here. But I don't feel I don't feel really gutsy about that. I feel like that's kind of too much of a risk. Uh, so, because I don't want him to to drop down. Oh, here we come, and boop! Nice, nice, perfect landing. Log the pressure data. Get that grasslands data. Get the get that temperature data. Um, do I have the temperature data already? 
Yeah, I think I do. Okay. Um, observe mystery goo. Observe the goo. Keep the data. Crew report. Reset the experiment. Jebediah, let's go. Let's let go. Oh no. Boop. <laughs> okay. So, do an EVA report. Nope. Serve a sample. Keep the data. Recover the vessel. In this case, recover the Kerbo. Not. It gives us that. Which isn't much. But, uh. Ships. So, this guy's landed here. And we'll recover that. There's a little bit more science. 25. Wow. Okay. A little bit more than I expected. So. We have choices here at the end of the episode. We have choices on what we want to do. Uh, we can jump into heavy rocket, heavier rocketry. We can get advanced electronics. We can go with the landing gear stuff. The advanced flight control, aerodynamics, advanced construction. This might be helpful. This might be helpful. Let's go ahead and research that. And, oh, specialized construction. Nice. This is the docking ports. <laughs> and the various adapters. This is parachutes, parachute CCS modules, lander cans, mono propellant, CCS ports. Um... Let's go ahead and research the aerodynamics as well. Let's see if that gets us anything new. Nope, just uh, a few more flight things. Advanced flight control. Um, may as well. Oh, interesting. So now we have what we need for precision engineering and advanced electronics. So we basically have enough for one more, and I kind of want to go with the heavy rocketry. I think that's, yeah, I think that's our best, just to get more powerful rockets so that we can go further and further out, I think is our best best bet. Um, and I think we'll save the, the lander stuff for now. Um, there's obviously there's also an advanced landing thing that we can get, which obviously we have to get the lander first. But uh, specialized control, hmm, don't have enough for that. But we do have another uh, rocket here, so we have more parts. We've gotten more of the tree done on our our. Mun trip. We can make another Mun trip. We might make another Mun trip. Um, I have some ideas on how to get a little more science out of the Mun. And I feel like we're pretty close to, to tapped out on Kerbin. If we could take a look. Yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of the science already from Kerbin. So there's, I don't think there's much more we can do here. Uh, we can't do some, some science. There's some science we can still do. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're pretty much done. You can see we've got a little bit more to go with, with, uh, some of the, some of the research stuff. You know, it's, that's our, our sun researcher. <laughs> that's kind of still floating. So how is that doing, by the way? I want to check that. How are you? Are you still kind of floating out? Um, yeah, you're still kind of floating out here among the cosmos, waiting to to intersect with Duna. Uh, it's almost actually something that we could use in the future, just as kind of a an orbit uh, to insert us into Duna. But that's uh, that's future stock. That's much, much more in the future, and as well as these other 
way further out planets like Elu and Dress and Jewel. They are all going to be stuff that we talk about later on. As you can see, we have a lot of a lot of Kerbal uh, space left to explore, as well as Moho and Eve. So thanks for watching, guys. I know this episode was a little short, but it's just kind of a kind of a catch up episode after all the things that have happened. So I will see you guys next time here on Kerbal Space Program. <laughs>